Good evening. My name is Lindsay Schwemann. Today is March 18th, 2015. And I'm Robbie Verdon, and this is Poly News Now. If you've been getting a kick out of the beautiful weather these past few days, then perhaps the upcoming Intramural Soccer League is for you. The first Florida Polytechnic Intramural Soccer League will be starting this Thursday, March 19th. Each game will consist of two teams with six players each, consisting of poly students, faculty, or staff. All the games will be played at the Lake Myrtle Park on Thursdays at 7 p.m. For more information, please reach out to Courtney Firebaugh at the Fitness Center. Is your programming food the strongest in the land? Will your Python style reign supreme over the other competition? Sign up, Young Grasshopper, and find out in the Developer Deathmatch competition. Sponsored by the AccuSoft Corporation, the program competition will be held here at Florida Polytechnic on March 27th from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. The event will consist of seven rounds of various programming challenges using the AccuSoft SDK technology. Only 10 teams will be able to participate in the competition, with a limit of four students per team. If you are interested in more information, or if you would like to register your team to participate, please visit their website at dev-deathmatch.eventbrite.com. The second game of Humans vs. Zombies is officially underway here at Florida Poly, so don't be alarmed if you see people running around campus with Nerf blasters and elaborate walkie-talkie setups. Throughout the week of March 16th, the Humans vs. Zombies game will be pit pitting two teams of students against each other in an epic struggle for survival. Man vs. Environment, Man vs. Man, the struggles of daily life in a nuclear wasteland. You won't be seeing any of these in the game, but you will get to see these students having a good time participating in this on-campus event. If you would like to learn more about the event, look for the Facebook group Humans vs. Zombies at Florida Polytechnic University, or send an email to hvzpoly at gmail.com. The first annual Protothon Lab at Florida Poly was held last Friday, March 13th, in the IST building on campus. This event was a purpose-driven collaboration competition for student groups to build, test, refine, and demonstrate their projects using both hardware and software solutions. Projects from the event included a supercomputer created from Raspberry Pis, a sound-sensitive LED light display, a solar-powered electricity generation unit, and much more. The Protothon Lab will be held once again this semester in mid-April, so keep an eye out for the information, and be sure to stop by and check out the cool projects being worked on by students here at Poly. The first annual Poly Pie Run was on Saturday. 85 people attended and had a whopping 100 pies, which were generously donated by Publix. J.D. Alexander's wife was in attendance, as well as the Poly president, Dr. Avent. The pie run took a comical turn of events when 10 runners went in the wrong direction, going right instead of left. Luckily, the pie run was staffed with enthusiastic volunteers who kept dancing and motivating the runners. SGA member Veronica Perez says, The Poly pie run was a huge success. Everyone had a great time and we had a great turnout. Thank you to everyone who attended, and please keep checking your email to be updated on future events at Poly. Looks like the pyro will be a long-lasting tradition we can all savor. As you all may have heard, the mascot debacle is still underway. Were there too many options, not enough, or did the finalists just suck? Here to comment is SGA President Andre Moss. How you doing, Andre? I'm very good. How are you, Robbie? So uh, is there any news that you can share on the mascots just yet, like the final decision? Uh, so as you all know, um, there has been four finalists. Um, they've, interview they've interviewed with the Fuse group that we're working with. Four finalists are Phoenix, Pioneers, and Technocats. All right. So um, I won't know the final decision until everybody else knows the right. final decision, which is on April 22nd. So how many people came out and voted? I don't know the exact number. Um, that I will probably ask Miss Dana because uh, I hope she knows. But I hope I think it's around good 200 plus students right. well I was definitely there and I voted for sure Did yeah you vote? were you loud oh, I yeah I voted nice must didn't like everybody else uh, were there a lot of write-ins I know that was an option that you guys have put on there so actually there were quite a bit of write-ins um, originally the four included the Wizards so there was enough write-ins for the Phoenix to be put in right. the final four interesting so. um, were there any uh, real weird write-ins that you'd like to share? Any funny ones, something that made you laugh? Um, I didn't count the votes and I actually wasn't there, mm. so I couldn't tell you if there were any r weird write-ins, but I mean, with uh... <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> with, sure there were. With some students, you know. <laughs> I can't, can't Absolutely. Hurt. Uh, what would you pick? What did you vote for? Or would you rather not disclose? So, um, as to what I picked, uh, I can share. I picked my idea, which was the pride. All right. Um, I can say I'm biased. Not, not a bad idea. No, it's fine, but uh, didn't make it. So, um, all, all good choices, though. Absolutely. I think oh yeah, you know, whatever we're left with is what we're gonna 
we're gonna we're gonna be. So um, right, might as well own up to it. Is there anything you'd like to see thrown out of the race? So I mean, I don't want to see anything thrown out of the way, race because all the groups who made these mascots worked really hard. Right. So they all deserve their place, and they all deserve to be one of the mascots. Yeah, and they had to make presentations in front of the uh, what the board of directors. The, yeah, like the that. executive board of the university. All the all the groups were, had to present their idea. And I mean, they all worked hard, worked over spring break. Yeah. Lovely. So if you put in the effort, then your idea gets through, then it deserves to be up there. Anything so. else you'd like to add? Um, no, I, I like to say, you know, whatever we're left with, I think people should be able to live with. And, right. you know, if it's something that you weren't particularly fond of, um, I think you can spin it and make it your own. Right. It's just one of those things you're going to have to embrace no matter what. Yeah. Right. Well, a lot of work was put into all this, and uh, we're really proud of the people who got chosen. Congratulations. And uh, Andre, thanks for coming out and talking to us. Thank you very much, Ryan. And now, Bit Talk with Nate Brown. Hi, my name is Nate Brown, and this is Bit Talk, where we take a bite out of gaming. Great news for the Walking Dead fans out there. Over the weekend at the South by Southwest Festival, Robert Kirkman announced that there will be a Payday-esque game made from the popular comic book slash TV show The Walking Dead. Kirkman also stated that while the game takes place in the same universe, it will not tie into Rick's adventures on The Walking Dead. Saying, I'd love a proper co-op, survival-focused GDW experience, but I just don't see it happening in a way that will satisfy either gamers or fans of the show. A three-minute trailer was also presented for the game, and even though it didn't show any gameplay or explain the story in any way, it still looks great. I don't really want to play it. Do you love playing Rock Band? Are you totally upset that they've made three Rock Bands and still have not included Darude Sandstorm? Well, as it turns out, sending angry tweets about it does absolutely nothing. But now you can submit a song request from directly to Harmonix. We'll post the link in the description for you guys. But you know what? Who knows? This might be the year they finally add Adele to Rock Band. We could have had it all rolling in the deep. In the Paula Dean is following in Kanye West's footsteps and releasing a game of her very own. A trailer for the game shows Paula Dean being all kinds of crazy for a minute and 30 seconds, and then shows about two seconds worth of actual game. But I guess there's not much to show when the game is pretty much candy crushed with butter and oil instead of candy and chocolate. While no one here at the PNN is waiting to download the game, I do encourage you that you watch the trailer, because Paula Dean is straight up bananas. Soma, the follow-up to the Amnesia, The Dark Descent, will begin beta testing in about a month. Frictional Games posted on their Facebook page, It feels both exciting and scary that the game is really nearly completed now. After several years of hard work, release is finally a clearly visible milestone. Frictional also stated that the testing should be done in about four weeks, so hopefully if the testers don't find too many problems, we'll be seeing the release of the game later in the year. Luckily, to hold us over until then, this awesome and eerie screenshot was posted. Smooth and a fresh jar of Skippy, I'm Nate Brown. Signing out. I'm Lindsay Schwoman. And I'm Robbie Verdon. Thanks for watching PNN, and be sure to tune in next time. And as always, stay classy, politics.